So previously, this is where we left off. So we had a picture up on the screen of our HPLC system in the laboratory that's manufactured by Shimatsu. This is an LC20 series. This was ordered in probably 2010, 2012, somewhere in there. I can't remember the actual date, but it's a fairly new instrument. The auto sampler is a little bit older that sits below. That's why it looks a little differently, and it doesn't match the front covers of these two boxes. But it still works beautifully uh, without a problem. Knock on wood, we've not really had an issue out of it yet. And we gave you some price rundowns, right? We gave you the rundown of the instrument and the auto sampler itself, and we kind of told you to take pride in what you're learning. You know, go out and tell people, don't be ashamed. You know, I'm using this $75,000 piece of equipment. You would not believe it. We actually get to inject samples on it. And this machine does the analysis for us. And we kind of uh, can uh, do a study of maybe an, an environmental uh, pesticide or herbicide or uh, maybe something that's dealing with a food product uh, that I want to study um, and do some research on. So this machine's doing it all for me. People are going to get impressed when you tell them that kind of stuff. So again, don't be ashamed. Take some pride in what you're doing throughout this process. Well, just like we said before, Shimatsu is just one of the manufacturers that are many manufacturers of HPLC instruments. But honestly, when it concerns the HPLC world, Shimatsu is one of the biggest heavy hitters that are out there. They are a global company, which means they are known all over the world, and their base is in Japan. So you can kind of tell that just by the name, Shimatsu right? It's almost like a Godzilla movie. Okay, so this Shimatsu company has locations all around the world, and they have multiple locations in the United States. And believe it or not, one of those locations is in the state of North Carolina near Research Triangle Park area. So we're looking at the Raleigh-Durham area. So Shimatsu has a location there. And that location has many pieces of equipment that they sell and distribute across the nation. So we've actually been approached with the idea of taking our students to Shimatsu in Durham and allowing them to tour their facility and take a look at all of the equipment that they produce and manufacture on site. So if your science course or science teacher is trying to think about an idea of where maybe they could go, then maybe bring this up to them. You know, you've got this beautiful, um, globally known company that's in the state a couple of hours away that they will gladly open their doors up to you and allow you to come in and tour their facility and tell you a little bit about what they do and about their instrumentation and what their instrumentation does. They would love to have you. So, you know, keep this in mind. You might want to take a trip to Raleigh someday and go to Shimatsu and take a look at some of the other equipment other than the HPLC that you're going to get some training on. I would also encourage you to visit their website. Their website is shimatsu.com, and then up at the top you're going to see an instrumentation link, and if you click the instrumentation, it will list all of the equipment that they make for an analytical laboratory. Take a look at it. You're going to see that they're full-bodied. They just don't specialize in one or two things. They actually make almost any equipment that you would need for a working laboratory on a daily basis, even down to balances. So take a look at some of their equipment. Get yourself familiar with Shimatsu because this is a company that you are using as far as the research project goes maybe or as far as the instrumentation training goes and what you're getting exposed to. So take it some general interest in the company itself. Some other brand names that are out there other than Shimatsu on HPLC. We have companies like Agilent, which is another big heavy hitter. We have companies like Waters that specialize in just HPLC. That's really what they're known for the most. We've got companies that have affiliations with Fisher Scientific, which is a common chemical supplier that your teacher might order some chemicals from. So Thermo Scientific is another. We have companies like Hitachi that specialize, yes, in instrumentation for an analytical lab.
Beckman Coulter, and we also have Perkin Elmer. So these are just some of the common names that are out there. There's probably 20 other manufacturers uh, that we can go through and that we can talk about as far as who makes what. But these are some of the logos and these are some of the names that are kind of hot when it concerns the HPLC world. Just like TVs, they all look differently. DVD players, they look differently. They're made differently, but they all do the same purpose. Again, HPLC is the same way. So up on the screen, what you're seeing is some different pictures of HPLC. So if I go back and take a look at ours, it looks like this. Okay. So we get this mobile face tray up here at the top with all these jugs. We've got all this tubing that goes from one box to the next. And then you can't see it on the picture, but there's a computer system that sits over here to the right-hand side that has software that controls the machine. Well, if you take a look at these pictures from other manufacturers, they're all made the same way. Some of these might be a little prettier than others. So that way, when you order them and put them on a lab bench, they're pretty. But they all do the same thing in its heart. Chromatography is chromatography. A TV is a TV. A DVD player is a DVD player. They just look different from the outside. Okay, so up here, if we take a look at this one, well, there's my mobile face tray, and there's some tubing that will come out of that through all of these boxes and into a computer system with some software, right? Different manufacturer, looks different, but it does the same thing. If I take a look down here at the bottom, mobile face tray, some tubing, runs through the boxes, and then eventually it goes into a software system. If I go up here to the top, to the right-hand side, well, there's a mobile face tray that sits up here at the top. It doesn't have the jugs on it, but that's what the purpose of that one is. Tubing comes out, goes through all of the boxes, and goes into a computer system with some software. And then finally, this is a really old one, right? So the mobile phase tray is actually over here to the side you can't really see it and it gets pumped through the boxes all the way through and then again you can't see it in the picture but there's a computer or an integrator system that's hooked up to this machine that will receive the data and start telling you how the sample is getting separated or what components are in the sample itself so they all look different as far as the casing goes, the face value of the machine. But on the inside, they're all doing the same type of job. So don't be thrown for a loop. You will come to us and you will use an HPLC. And if you're interested in getting a laboratory job and you go out for a company and you work for them doing whatever you want to do for them, whether it's in food or drug, pharmaceuticals, environmental, uh, forensics, whatever the case is, if you have an HPLC system, just keep in mind the front covers will look differently, but the inside of them and what they're doing is going to be the same across the board. It's, do you prefer Samsung or LG? Which one do you prefer? And that's what happens in a lab environment. Okay, so let's take a look at our instrument again. And let's list the pieces and parts that we're going to be talking about in the upcoming videos. So here's the instrument. Again, the auto sampler is down here at the bottom. But we're going to have to start taking a look a little closer at each and every piece, just so I feel comfortable with it. So that way, when you come to us and you begin to run samples on the machine, this is not foreign territory for you. It's not alien to you right? You can go to the machine, open the doors up, and say, oh yeah, I remember the way that that looked, and I remember when we talked about those pieces and parts and what they did and the purpose of them. So that's the purpose of these series of videos. That way you can come to us and get your hands on them immediately, and we don't have to go through this lecture stuff in a classroom face-to-face. -face. You're actually doing it in your own time. So the first piece up here is the mobile phase holder or tray and that sits up here at the very top and you can see our mobile phase jugs, multiple ones of them. The next piece is called a degasser and it does just that, it degasses something 
And that's the second box that sits right below the mobile phase tray. The punt or the, the box that sits below the degasser, which is here, is called the pump, and it does just that. It pumps something. We'll talk about those things too. Then if I keep going below this big box down here at the bottom, we've kind of alluded to before, that is the auto sampler. Makes me happy. The trumpets are playing because I can load multiple samples up and it will run those samples for me and I can come back hours later and it's all done. Then we have something called the column and the column you can't really see in this picture but we'll take a look at the column. Then we have something called the detector. Again this is the eyeballs of the machine and what we have on this particular instrument, the Shimatsu LC20, is a UV vis detector. So that basically means the eyeballs are UV vis dependent. If something is not doing uh, what it needs to do in UV invisible light, then this machine will not see it. It will be just blank. And then we have a waste jug. And the waste jug you cannot find in the picture either. But we've got pictures of the waste jug and we'll show you how it's hooked up. You can see the pieces of tubing over here to the left, those two big pieces of white tubing. All of this is drainage that comes out of the machine and that goes into our waste jug. So we'll show you what the waste jug looks like shortly. Alright, so that's the pieces and that's the parts that we're going to be talking about as far as the equipment goes. And we're going to go through and we're going to talk about them in a little more detail, show you some up close and personal pictures of them, so again, you can become familiar with them before you come to us and on our campus. Okay, so that's where this video is going to end. The next video, we're going to start with our mobile face holder, and we're going to work through piece by piece. And hopefully, in a couple of videos, we will be done, and you will be HPLC experts.